Hey guys, Colin here. And I know you probably weren't expecting to see this kind of video, but I wasn't really expecting to do this anyways. Um, but here I have 2D convolution. I was just kind of interested in implementing the idea. And it's essentially just a smoothing tool for those of you that don't know what convolution is. So let's say we have some kind of a hill like this and it's very steep, right? This is a huge, a pretty big change. And when we run the convolution on it, it will do a slight uh, kind of adjustment between them. So it'll give you kind of less of a change. And the more times you do it, the smoother it will become, but eventually hits some steady state equilibrium where it says, all right, this, this hill is perfectly smooth, which is right here, uh, where you have one row that looks like that, one row that looks like that, one row that looks like that for some reason, and then the last row. So it, it decided that this is the perfect smoothness, um, and it cannot be smoothed any further. Um, this is pretty cool in its application. It's a good tool, but I mainly just did it as a proof of concept. Uh, so here you can see another dramatic change uh, of it smoothing, and it won't go any further than the green dots just because uh, it considers a change of only one block pretty smooth. All right, then here's a build that looks already smooth. So if I go ahead and run the smooth tool, you're going to see little to no change. You'll see a little bit of change, a little bit of change, and maybe a little bit more change. But it's overall like very minor changes, and now it's in an equilibrium state. Uh, so things that are already smooth are not obviously not going to be able to be smoothed down more. Uh, granted, you can actually adjust the rate of smoothening, and you can turn it to a sharpening tool as well if you want. Um, and I'll I'll go over that, but the sharpening is a little bit more complicated because I don't these blocks that I'm placing or changing I'm not actually placing or changing, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So. Let's just go over what convolution is to begin with. So I started by making a 1D case where I took this thing and it smoothed it down. I don't, uh, let me go ahead and do data pack enable file, file slash con, uh, it was called Laplacian, Laplacian, I might have deleted it. Um, but uh, it essentially basically was aimed at smoothing this and it did work. So let's go over like what smoothing has to do with and what convolution is because like convolution might be something unknown to you. So let's create some kind of a scenery. Uh, and this can be seen as like a graph or a line. Okay. And that should be good enough. Okay, so here's our line. And this is just going to cover 1D. I'm just gonna talk about 1D convolution. So here we have a line. Convolution takes this line and some other lines. So we'll call it, uh, we'll make it look like this. This is our other line, it's a bar. Okay, so this bar, we're going to denote a value of one, one, one. Okay, so it has like one, one, one. Okay, then what we do is we sweep it across and we take the multiplication of whatever the values here, here, and here, and we add them up and divide by the total. Okay, so if we were doing, let's let's move the, the line over to here, and let's call this one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Okay, so here we have one, two, we have three, so three times one is three, okay? And then here we have four, four times one, because we said the yellow bar is always one, so four times one is four, and then we have five, so five times one is five. All right, so then three plus four plus five is equal to 12, okay? And then 12 divided by four, uh, three, because there's three, is equal to four. So what was determined here is that the point that we draw on our new line in the middle is gonna be four, okay? So that makes sense because we have one up, one down, one middle, so the average of the three would be just itself. But if we do kind of a weirder case where we're say, Let's go here. So this is like more dramatic change, right? So we'll put our bar here. So we have three plus one plus one, which is five divided by three is equal to a, well, this has to do with the rounding. So five divided by three is pretty close to two. So we'll round up to two. And that means that the line that is drawn here is two. Okay, and if you run all the calculations, you're going to get basically something that is a smoother version of this line. Uh, so the parts we're, the parts around here are going to get 
uh, stay basically the same, but then the parts around here are going to get smooth. The parts at the top are going to get dropped by maybe one level or so. And uh, yeah, so how do we accomplish this? Well, we accomplish it exactly um, like I just described in commands. So what we do is we set up a recursion. The recursion is centered right here. So your recursion is basically going to start, say, right here, okay? With And what you do is you calculate whatever the height is. The, the tricky part is calculating the height. That takes up, the, that's the limiting factor. So to calculate the height, we have to start at some value in the sky and then slowly step our way down until we reach something. And that's going to give us the height level is how many times we move down. Um, so we do that from some generic starting point. I set the 73 here, which is right around this area. But uh, in another part that I'll show you, I just set the height to wherever the person is at. So anyway, so we start from the height, we march our way down, we figure out what this level is. Um, so we save that number onto a scoreboard, and then we calculate that for this guy, and we calculate that for this guy. Now on the boundary, what we do is we just copy the inner value. So we just protect, we just mirror it. So if this was here, we would just copy it. Um, in the same case on the other boundary, we just copy the one step in or yeah, inside. Okay. So we get these three heights, which this one is the same as this one, right? Then we do the calculation. So we figure out what the average is. And then we save that to a data storage to do later. Okay. And the reason you save it to a data storage is because when you're using 2d convolution, if you actually like change this block up here to up here then when you come back you might overlap it twice so now you're doing it for a second level so after we calculate the convolution of this point so we figure out what the value of this point should be then all we do is we calculate the next height so we calculate the height here and then we move our center over and we shift all of our saved scoreboard values down and we lose the last one and you do those steps over and over until you reach the end. So then to do that in 2D, it's a little bit more complicated because there's two boundary conditions. There's the condition on this boundary and there's the condition on this boundary. So you have all four boundary conditions and you just move it in recursion. So you move it, you sweep this way and then you move it over and then you sweep that way and then you move it over and you have a, this is called a kernel, the thing that you convolve with that looks like that. And they're all ones and you divide, add them all up and you divide by nine. And that's pretty much all the theory behind it. So each time we run it, it's like that. Um, and I will say that this is a 17 by 17 area and it takes 48,000 to run. So you're hitting pretty close to the limit. So if you're doing something like a tool for this, then you wanna cut the limit down to a smaller size. Uh, but I think this is a pretty cool application because the actual convolution, this is basically implementing convolution and you can change the uh, kernel, which is the thing that you multiply everything by, to be pretty much whatever you want. So instead of all ones, you could do like all twos or you could do ones and twos, you could do negatives, stuff like that. And what that allows you to do is uh, smoothing and sharpening. So for one of the sharpening algorithms, you put ones at the edges and you put four in the middle and you put zeros on the corners. So that's a Laplacian sharpening tool. Uh, but of course, sharpening is a little bit more complicated because you would have to take whatever was there and bring that same thing up. So you're going to run into some problems with smoothing. You could just delete things because you know you're always going to get less of the thing uh, most of the time. Uh, but with sharpening, you have to add on. So the adding on is the only thing that I haven't implemented, which will probably cost a lot more work. But let's go ahead and look at this in practice. Uh, let me see if I can find a place. Oh, here's a good spot, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good demonstration. And I'm running this 20 times a second, by the way, and you're not seeing too much lag. So it's a pretty efficient algorithm and you can control how much smoothing you want. So here I'm just doing aggressive amounts of smoothing. It might hit an equilibrium state, but because the area is so small, it usually takes a long time to actually, it, it could sometimes never hit an equilibrium state because our, we're moving the area. So you can see that I pretty much deleted that entire mountain 
um, just because it couldn't reach an equilibrium state because the air surface area that it's covering is pretty small and I'm moving where it's uh, smoothing every time. So I could smooth one area past another area and then the overlap and uh, smooth each other into infinity. Uh, but sometimes it just stops. So this just makes things a little bit smoother. Not really sure how useful this tool is, but I think it's pretty cool that you can do it in vanilla with uh, basically no lag. Like, I don't know, I would get pretty much the same frame loss if I use something like voxel snipers. Anyways, guys, that's just about does it for today. I just wanted to show that concept. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.